we go. This was um, some months ago. We had five, was it? We had 63 or so the other day. But um, in the uh, homeopathic science, I took um, one tiny bit of uh, silver water, spatterment, and then uh, dunk some uh, bread and um, we threw it out onto the lake, the ducks or the swans and ducks ate it. Now that becomes um, those five or six that ate it, uh, they take on the immortality if you like. And uh, is the reason why the seas have been turning red. We should do an upload on that too. Mm. Um, some years ago, around 2000, I started making uh, reverse osmosis colloidal silver uh, with um, my blood mixed with it. And um, Dimity had become a Buddhist and their um, guru was supposed to be the king of uh, Indonesia. And he was taking on all the obvious congregation's sins, so they say he was getting sicker and sicker. So she asked me if the uh, Miracle water would uh, cure him, and I said it'll either cure him or kill him. I said, Now she wanted to take um, four litres, and this man is bedridden. And on Friday nights, she would stay over night with uh, him and look after him. A pretty dedicated, lovely thing to do. Really. So I warned her that he will feel so good that you mustn't let him get up and exert himself. Because it's very dangerous. <laughs> well, it cured him and killed him. He got up, went outside, down the lane, to the toilet, he hadn't been up for ages and ages and ages. And on the way back, um, he dropped dead and a massive heart attack. Or a stroke. Probably a stroke. Had his eyes crossed. That makes a stroke, doesn't it? Mm. So, of course, Dimity had to witness this, you see. And yet her stepfather is God. Totally ignores him. Thinks I'm an idiot, right? even though I cure AIDS <laughs> and everything else. And put all these fantastic things up on the internet over the years. All I wanted was a family meeting, you know. So let's get everybody together and talk about it. <laughs> Hello. My name's Nell Street. They used to call me Janelle. You know why they have white underwings? You made them that way? Well, it's for landing. <laughs> yeah. For landing lights? No, when they come in, yes. Mm. That's right. As they're building their wings, it's hitting the water, mm. and they're getting the light bouncing the back, and they know exactly Ooh. how high they are Ooh. when they're about 30 feet up. Oh. When, you, when you see them come in in formation, I, only, I saw two coming from up all the way up. And as they're coming in, they're on a glide, mm. right? And you could feel the vibration of their wings as the feathers would stall. Yeah. Individual feathers were stalling. Yeah. Therefore, no lift. And they came down and they landed this sound going past. 
and they landed exactly the same moment. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So they have the uh, white wings, mm. and they put the glide out, and they can they can move them about, mm. and they can reflect moonlight or sunlight or whatever they want. No. Because they see things that you can't see. You're pretty good at flying, aren't that? Okay, so we've um, contacted 18 churches, embassies, and whatever. Newspaper. Newspaper, a marriage. Business. Uh, marriage a wedding. Business, wedding business in Hollywood. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Did we mention uh, on the letter we sent that Obama had made two years earlier, had made the 21st of December speech? No, I don't think we did. Say. There's a lot of information in there, though. It's flat out getting it interpreted and then following all the logic, reason. We well, said it in English, anyhow. Yes, it's, they'll have to get it interpreted. <laughs> I don't think that's a problem. So Nettie's been on and he's getting out of Facebook. This is totally controlled, is that right? Yep. Oh yeah, they're just playing with everybody. I wonder if it's a uh, computer program as opposed to actual people doing it. Well, what did we hear the other day that uh, the building where they had Facebook is in Norway or somewhere, isn't it? Didn't we oh, I didn't hear that, no. Yeah. Facebook facility or something. Sweden or Norway, somewhere like that. Yeah, that guy was talking about it. Um, it's a well-placed uh, meteor. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the fellow was talking about to do with alternative energy, solar cells, and talking about the amount of power needed to, I don't know, but it was the Facebook building. <laughs> the cold snow and ice across Moscow and the northern countries are killing people left right and centre. Now, uh, as usual, um, we're down to the wire and uh, we get into the ear of the Armenians, tell them how the, all the numbers fit. Prove who I am, no problem. And um, the prophecy of the Hindi has come true in that it was supposed to be a thousand years old that Jehovah Yahweh, would, Jesus Christ, would be back on the earth and be recognized in 2012. Mm. Now we've only got two days to go. <laughs> so what we'll do, we'll make up a, uh, a fake uh, acceptance <laughs> by the high <laughs> priest. Right? Mm. Yes, we believe that this is the law. Because after all, the prophecy has to come true.
sun with a blue spot. All the energy pours out and directly looking at you. It's just six, five, seven numbers. So. Mm. I mean, it's, it's such a lock in, slam down, mm. open the zero. You know. Right. Okay, who am I now? If I'm not in, who am I? <laughs> right. Have you ever done an evil thing in my life? <sighs> Have you ever lied? I don't mean women, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> And forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They do know what they're doing. And if they get down on their knees, I will forgive them. Pretty fair, isn't it? Mm. Oh oh. Mind you, you're locked in. You're locked in. You're bound by the covenant. Uh, that you made with Adam. Everything. Explain it. Well, uh, you gave Adam 5,500 years and it doesn't, didn't matter how much Adam um, pleaded for forgiveness and to be allowed back into the garden. He said that uh, he couldn't. It had to be the 5,500 years and it was over and over that Adam and his righteous seed. So, that's it. Now what happened uh, in the middle of Australia when we was taking the H1N1 uh, cure to the mm. Aboriginals when they're trying to kill them all? Mm. And uh, I turfed Adam out. <laughs> oh, he begged. Same thing, huh? Yeah. Well, so. what is interesting is, um, yeah, he begged for, oh yes, he, oh yeah, exactly, beating his breast. That's what Adam did. He, beating his breath and crying and tears prostrated on the ground and wanted to die over and over and over in the story and you forgave him other things but the, for the transgression of uh, breaking the one very simple co commandment told him over and over I can't it's, it's, it's left my mouth it's covenanted, I can't break it you'll have to wait the 5500 years So that would have been the 7th of July, 7th of July 2009, mm. we won't look at it that way. Yeah, well, as I say, doing the measurement, using Google Earth, because mm. um, I pulled them up three times to get it right. Mm. So whatever is on there now, is, that's good enough. And the distances are what I've revealed, the 777 mm. point seven seven number. To the church, yeah. And um, the distance um, from Abraham, who was going to sacrifice his son. Mm. So the test was, the seed of Adam, had he learned a lesson? Well, mm. Abraham came along. He was going to kill his son. Because I said so. Mm. So I said, no, no, don't worry about it. So then he goes to, from well, there. He had faith that you would provide. Yeah, a lamb. Mm. The sacrifice, yeah. So from there he walked 68.888 kilometres. Mm in three days. There's just three day prophecy again. Mm. The third day raised again from the dead. And that's November the 11th, which uh, Michelle asked me about. Nothing happened. I mean November 30th. November 30th. 68.888 years on. Okay, and? Simplify it. Adam couldn't, man created in the image of God. Could not even obey one very minor, in the, 
don't eat the fruit from that tree. And you told Adam that Eve was not on the scene. Sure. So Adam was to blame for the fall because he was with Eve when the serpent came along and beguiled her. She was completely innocent. He goes, oh, okay, and then hands it to Adam and he took of it. He should have stopped right there and then said, no, God said not to. However, so. So Eve, now they found his shoe. Well, yes, this is really interesting because <laughs> one of the first things in the story is that when they came out of the garden, after being in lush grass, where they didn't need. Now they're out in this strange land, they called it, and it's all rocky and stones, and they didn't know how to navigate, just walking along the, the, the rockiness. So just as they were now experiencing hot and cold, they needed covering, and the skins of lambs, which had been um, killed by lions, I suppose, some beast, the angels in the their cave, which was called the Cave of Treasures. That was their shelter after coming out of the garden. The angels showed them how to stitch up the lamb skin as coverings for them. And then when I saw the photograph of the shoe that they found, and they say it's 5,500 years old, well, it looks like just the kind of thing that they'd need to have on their ground because they'd They'd be walking on the straw, stuffing them with straw as the padding mm. so that they wouldn't hurt their feet from the rocks and then join uh, the skins together with very uh, rough stitching. The angels uh, used some kind of a, like a pine needle, long skinny needle that was vegetation. And then you sent your word and it said that it um, that made the stitching invisible. Anyway, so Adam... Well, they found the shoe. Yes, they found the shoe. In a cave. It's, and it's in Ararat, and it's in a, not in Ararat, it's in uh, um, Armenia as one of their historical finds. Well, that's, that's amazing. So that means that the strange land was that area. I've got to put my foot in, I suppose. It's a bit like the Cinderella story. <laughs> this strange land after being evicted from the garden where everything was provided and... Everything was bigger. Yes, everything was bigger, it was lush, the figs were the size of watermelons. But while they were in the garden, they, they didn't have the need to eat so much. Uh, well, they didn't, because they didn't know what eating was and they were reluctant to eat and they, they didn't even have the body for digesting or processing food so that evolved over the days and weeks the longer they were out of the garden and the necessity so fainting all the time with hunger and thirst and fasting and praying and well they have to have bacteria in the gut begging for forgiveness and then being satan appearing to them on about 12 different occasions different apparitions as they were being tested over and over I mean, when, when, when you read about it, it um, well, as I said to you, they're just they're, they're children, naive children who, who didn't do what Daddy told them to do, and now they're out, it's like living in Pitt Street, Sydney, after being in a beautiful mansion, as small children. Mm -hmm. And the only way they can survive is to be constantly praying and asking you about everything. Should I do this? Should I do that? And every, any time that they didn't ask, it, you know, they got into trouble. And so the first question says, <laughs> first question from, who told you to leave the cave? Or, or who told you to do this? So they got used to, before making their next, take, taking their next breath, <laughs> asking if they should and waiting for the answer. So basically, that gets us to my birth date, plus 70 weeks, weeks of Daniel, yeah, for 70 years of that your life. gives us January the 11th, 2.22am, mm, 2013. 2013, so the rest of the world is going to be lagging behind a little bit. Mm.
a little bit of work at what Tom did with that. I'm not going to tell him. Yes, well, it'll be, uh, what, 14.22 or 12.22? Uh, what are we talking about? Thank you. See, I feel justified in answering on behalf of the Archbishop um, because I did write the script in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yes, it'll be 4.22 in the afternoon. 16.22. 16.22. Revelation 16, something like that. Yes, uh, See, um, I might as well go ahead and make the announcement because they're in an untenable position. Oh, I should mention my brother. Who yeah, was born the same number as the distances from the church to the Great Pyramid? Mm. Slightly less than 8.88 years. So it gets that same number, right? It's 8878. Mm. That's what it is. And, um,. Sunrise to sunset, with the moonrise 197 minutes later, was uh, for the sunrise to sunset was 780, which I was looking up today. For you remember, mm -hmm. and that is Ararat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and 197. Mm -hmm. Ararat. Couldn't save his life. No. Which is, I tried out there. Made a complete fool of myself in front of the family. Mm. But I, I did think it was rather amusing. I wish I had a camera with me, and I didn't. When the chalk on the chalkboard mm. on Christmas Day, mm. after they'd been in their usual taunting me about my odd beliefs. So what year was that? Then? Uh, it would have been um, probably 2000. Mm. Where from that point onwards are tied in with Michael. Mm. But the uh, chalk had rearranged itself to the, as if it was done with the CAD program, forming G O D in white on a black board and leaving the uh, chalk that had been written out by my niece, who was born on my birthday, by the way. My aunt died on my birthday too, I think. Mm. So, um, the chalk where she'd written out, the atoms had 
left like a, a, a circle. Like a ghost? Like a yeah, ghost? sort of just shaded off. Yeah. And then all accumulated to letters about two inches high. Mm. And uh, <coughs> they all left. <laughs> just got up and walked out. So I'm left there with uh, Kerry and uh, her um, de facto, Peter, and, and the twins. Let's have a family meeting, put it all together. This is what I'm telling you. You all say how smart I am and I should be a millionaire. Well, everything's based on money in my family. Mm. So, there you go.